What is normal? And is it something that should be desired? Normal as in basic, standard, commonplace, mediocre. Is that what one should strive for? Mediocrity? Now, of course, in the realm of non-normal brain wirings, you are going to have instances of impairment, disadvantage, and disability. But the very same thing could be said to be true about normal brain wirings. There are many behaviors and functioning within the realm of normal brain wiring that are definite impairments, disadvantages, and disabilities but are not looked upon as such because they fall into the realm of normal. Over time, the distinction of what is not normal from the point of view of normal has grown stronger and more intrusive, to the point now where if you do not function or behave in a certain way, you are classified as not normal. And what's intrusive is that the normal want to intrude and invade everything. One invasion is that these so-called normal people want to take over all the areas that used to be occupied by gifted people with natural talents. This is an attempt to supplant natural creative ability with well-trained copies of natural creative talent. This has been happening for the last 30 years, and the evidence is all around you. This is why the quality of music, dance, theater, film, writing, and art has been on the decline. This has been especially true in writing, film, and music. It's gotten to the point where the majority of music, TV, and movies are just pure garbage. Mainstream regurgitation. It's all graphic, candy-coated, oversexed pulp. In your face blood and guts and pornography. A complete lack of subtlety and suspense in leaving things to the imagination. Imagination? Nah. Now they beat you over the head with it. They treat us as if we were stupid. And people are not innately stupid. But people can become stupid when they consume that which has been dumbed down. The downgraded state of all these various media mediums are not an indication that the avenues are flawed but only an indication that those that are producing through those avenues are untalented. This is because these areas have been taken over by no-talent hack copycats that are now put into these positions because they want the lifestyle of an artist and have the connections to make it happen. We'll never get to see many of the great talents of today because some well-connected moneymaker's nephew wants to pretend he's a director. We'll never get to hear some great female vocalists because some plastic shallow bimbo looks good. So instead we must accept the whiny auto-tune singing of Barbie dolls and strippers. Normal people want to clean up the arts. And so now eccentric, talented, gifted people are being stigmatized with a diagnosis of being not normal and cast to the side. Mediocrity would have us believe that there is an overabundance of gifted people nowadays, but really all there is is an abundance of mediocrity trying to pass itself off as gifted. They have just enough mediocre skills to get by. And since these people are now in the overpopulated majority, they are now trying to take over everything, even in places they have no business in. In places that, if it were 30, 40 years ago, in the days of true talent and natural ability, they would be laughed right off the stage. But nowadays, mediocrity filters out the true artists, 
and replaces them with wannabes. Anything that falls outside of normalcy simply gets labeled or diagnosed as not normal, impaired, disabled, or disadvantaged. And this is another invasion in the realm of mental health. In the area where it's being abused the most is with children. Nowadays, there is no more respect for the individual differences in children. Not every child reaches the same benchmarks at the same pace. Children have different trajectories of development, and different children have different strengths and weaknesses. This is no longer recognized by parents, educators, and therapists. One reason is too many people want to benefit off the cash cow of extra funding, therapy, prescription drugs, and special needs treatments. In truth, there are not as many people who are actually disadvantaged or disabled as they would have you believe. It only seems that way because nowadays they are giving out diagnosis like candy. But in truth, the rate of what they are calling disabilities are not really on the rise. They are just passing out the label more frequently. These people that are getting these stigmatizing labels have always been around. There has always been odd, eccentric, introverted, socially awkward people that have had great talents. The reality of people who are gifted in some areas but lack in others is not a new phenomena. You may have someone who is a great artist but is lacking in communication skills. Another person might be excellent in social skills but lacks in dexterity. Just because a person lacks in some characteristic does not mean they are a broken person or that something is wrong with their brain. Oftentimes, areas that are lacked in as children often become areas of excellence as adults. This is why it is a great slander to label a child anything. A lack of a skill at any age should not be equated with a disorder. Change is always in effect. People have become stricken with difficulties and people have overcome difficulties. There is nothing that is wrong with people who face the many different challenges of life. But the so-called normal people have some agenda to prove otherwise. The categorization of disorders as pertaining to various skills in children is growing wider and wider. So a child that does not speak until he is three years old now becomes autistic. Socially shy children become pervasive development delay not otherwise specified. A child who has a fascination with certain subjects now has Asperger's syndrome. The child that has trouble with reading? Dyslexic. Children that are clumsy or becoming distracted? Sensory integration or auditory processing disorders. The child who has trouble concentrating? Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder. It's not just growing pains, it's a brain disorder. What exactly this brain disorder is composed of cannot be identified or explained, but yet a label is at the ready. So in other words, if your child is only slightly off the norm in any area, the normal people are ready to diagnose them with mental illness and bombard them with treatments. And educators are more than happy to accommodate all this. And of course, this has nothing to do with the fact that the school the child attends will now qualify for lots and lots of money from insurances, scholarships, and grants, as well as money from city, state, and federal government. This is insanity and greed, and it's gotten out of control. And much of it is just pure bullshit. Now, this is not to say that there are no children with disabilities out there. There are. It's just much less than what we're led to believe. Too many kids who are perfectly fine get grouped in and labeled as disabled. One term they have concocted to accommodate this ever-growing population is the label high-functioning. 
Yes, he struggled a bit with reading and social skills when he was a small child, even though he has grown up and is now an avid reader with great social life, he is somehow high-functioning disabled. Which brings up a question. Is it better to be high-functioning disabled or low-functioning non-disabled? When we talk about what is normal, why is it assumed that this is something desirable or beneficial? Normal is average, it's mediocre, it's unremarkable. Is this what people want to be? And what's sad is that most people would argue that yes, it is best to be normal. And that's because societies put normalcy on a pedestal. It is considered perfection to be a reliable, well-oiled part in a machine. To be like all the others. To be like the ones. All the ones are doing it. And it is not normal if you are not aligned with the ones. You must not be unique, different in any way. You must not be an individual. You must be like all the ones. And if you are not like all the ones, you will be pecked to death. Just like that chicken in the chicken coop that gets pecked to death by all the other chickens. You must not be a strange bird. You must be a normal chicken. You must be like all the ones. All of the ones are doing it. All of the ones are buying it. All of the ones are talking about it. All of the ones are believing it. If you're not doing it, buying it, talking about it, and believing it, then you must not be normal. And therefore, you will become an object of ridicule and disdain. The ones will unite against you. Who is that strange man? He is quirky, eccentric, odd, different. He must be a loser. Maybe even a criminal. Definitely troublesome. We will have to deal with him. You must be like all the ones and 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 you must be like all the ones. Abandon all hope, all ye that resists the invasion of the ones. The point being illustrated here is that unique, talented people who are gifted and have natural ability need to step up and utilize their special techniques and perspectives. This is a calling that is badly needed in the world and is what people should strive for. We should not aspire to conform to mediocrity and normalcy. Pointing out the sheep, the lemmings of conformity, and the invasion of the ones is not an attempt to place blame, demonize, or to point an accusing finger at a victim or an oppressor. It is a reminder that these compromised people are in need of wisdom and guidance, and it is up to a minority of unique individuals to help raise them up and out of this condition. But this first must be recognized, and this can only be seen when we resist being drawn into joining the normal, popular majority. It's hard to accomplish this. Mediocrity is glamorized and put on a pedestal, and there is a strong lure to be accepted and to fit into this. But know that there is an important need for the unconventional, the unorthodox, and the abnormal. So stay unique and treasure your natural talents. Without such, there would be very little hope for progress and upliftment.